Hey guys, it's Arthur here, and today I'm checking out a very exciting gimbal from Zyun. They were generous enough to send me this, which is the Crane 3 Lab. Think of it as a Weebill Lab, but bigger and better in many, many ways. So super excited to check this out. Let's see how it comes packaged. This is the box that the gimbal comes in. Inside of the box, you get this nice rubberized styrofoam case with a handle on it. And if you unlock it, here is the gimbal, so awesome looking. Uh, very compact, you could see right away. First things first, you get a lot of user guides and warranty information about the Crane 3 Lab. A three battery charger, three batteries, mini tripod with extra grippy sides. It's almost a perfect circle, so you can use this as a handle, which you will definitely be using with this gimbal. A nice semi-hard zippered pouch. Inside you get a whole bunch of cables to connect to your various camera models. And the top camera mount with an included lens support bracket. Lastly, we have the gimbal itself, which you can see all collapsed. And what's nice about these newer Zyun gimbals is that they have locks on each axis. So it's very convenient and much easier to pack something like this that isn't wiggling all over the place. And here is what the gimbal looks like with a camera mounted on it. I just put my a6500 on it with a wide angle lens from Sony. And you could see how compact or how large it is depending on how you look at it. So let's take a tour around this gimbal just so that you can see some of the features that are built in. So I'm gonna start at the bottom of this gimbal and move my way up. So here is that mini tripod that I collapsed. And then you can see right here with your left hand, assuming that you are right-handed, you have a little switch that can move in any direction so that you can move the gimbal in any direction while you are shooting. Just to the left of that, you have a focus wheel. So this is for connecting the follow focus motor to your camera so that you can control focus on the fly while using it. Now what's unique about this is I thought this was kind of like just a white plastic piece that came off but it's not, it's intended to be there, and this white ring actually glows in the dark. Just above there, you have a power button and a mini tripod mount for accessories. Around the front, there are a couple of buttons. Here is lock mode, so it's kind of like a up and down switch, so lock mode is down, and then pan follow is up, so you can quickly switch between these two modes just by hitting these buttons. And then if you want to connect your phone to use as an external monitor, then you can do that by using this USB port right there. Now this compartment here is where the batteries go. So you can flip the switch back and you'll see there are three batteries in there. Moving backward, there's another mini tripod for accessories. This arm actually doesn't rotate. It looks like it could, but it does not. It stays fixed in its position. And this is the rear grip where you have a whole bunch of functions for controlling your camera. You can see there is a power button, go button, menu with a scroll wheel, TV, AV, and ISO button for controlling your camera. Here on this side, you have three buttons, F, POV, and RE. RE is reset, and then on the same grip on the front side, you can see that there is a little T and W, that's wide and telephoto, that is for zooming in with your lens. So now let's move up to the first axis. There is a lock on this axis, which is really nice, so you can unlock it, and now the gimbal will move. The second axis does have a lock as well on the back. There are nice knobs or levers here for adjusting your uh, camera and balancing it. And there are markings on the inside so that you can easily remember your settings. The last axis here also has a lock. There is a DC eight volt out, so you can charge your camera using this gimbal if you wanted to. Um, you have a mini HDMI for viewing video, a camera control, which I do have plugged in to my camera right now. Around the front, there's a Wi-Fi on and off button, a couple of focus slash zoom controls. So you can plug in a couple of cables here and potentially control both your zoom and your focus on compatible lenses and camera bodies. Now powering on the gimbal, you get the familiar interface that uh, Zyun has on a lot of their products, battery indicator and the mode. And then you can get into the menu system if you want to. Uh, you can go and control the motor, wheel, joystick, rocker, you can calibrate angles, focus, all of that fun stuff. So there are quite a few settings that you can play around with on the gimbal itself, in addition to having an excellent app that you can download and control 
and adjust a bunch of settings. All right, so that is a tour around the gimbal. The most important bit, however, is how smooth it is. And so I took this gimbal out with my Sony a6400 and my Sigma 16 millimeter lens, um, which doesn't have any stabilization, no IBIS on the camera. And here are some sample videos. All right, so that is it for the sample videos with this gimbal. And I have to say that when I got the Webill Lab initially to review from Zyun, I was expecting that gimbal to perform better than it did. It kind of underwhelmed a bit. This gimbal, I was expecting it to be like the Webill Lab, maybe a touch better, uh, but it is a whole lot better than the Webill Lab in my opinion. Uh, this is by far the smoothest gimbal that I've tested on this channel. And just for fun, I decided to test the smoothness um, and compare it to the Moza Air 2, which is my favorite gimbal up until this point. In fact, I have the Moza Air 2 here. So here they are right next to each other. You can see that the Moza Air 2 is taller, definitely. I wouldn't say it's bigger, it's just different in a way. The design on the Crane 3 Lab is just unique. Uh, so it's kind of hard to compare the size between these two. Weight-wise, they weigh about the same. Both are relatively heavy. And you will get tired, your arms will get tired after a while using either one of these. Um, so let's take a look at some sample footage just side by side using both of these gimbals with the same camera and same lens. These are cropped 4K video files side by side. You can see that both gimbals are relatively smooth. The Crane 3 Lab is just a touch smoother. There's just a little bit more up and down motion with the Moza Air 2, but it's certainly not terrible at all. I think that part of the difference in stability can be explained with the grip and the two points of contact that you have with this gimbal, one with your left hand and here with your right hand, like I said before, it kind of creates a very stable um, kind of triangle. And with a normal gimbal, you really have just one point of contact. So the resulting footage can be a little bit more shaky and with a little bit more up and down motion. Back to the Crane 3 Lab, this thing really is very good. The battery life on it is excellent. I charged it once and I've been using it over the course of three or four days and the battery life, as you saw, 
is still at like 50%. It's very smooth. I didn't experience any jittering, any shaking. And these are settings straight out of the box. Controlling the gimbal was very easy with this control panel around the back. I did have my camera plugged in and on the a6400, the record button worked. I didn't have a zoom lens on it, so I wasn't able to test out the zoom toggle switch here. I had absolutely no issues balancing my camera on this gimbal. The payload is way over anything that I could throw at it. Um, for a light camera like this APS-C system, there is more than enough torque and power in these motors. All right, so this gimbal is great, super smooth. It's very easy to use. It's a little bit intimidating at first, but it's not that bad at all once you start using it out in the field. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about is this overkill? Um, and for most of you, for most of your average consumers out there, uh, the answer is yes. I mean, this gimbal can handle much heavier cameras. Why would you go out and spend big money on this versus getting something like the Weebill Lab or something that's more compact? And what I found on this channel is that the smaller gimbals, although they are way more convenient, they pack up nicely, they're easier to travel with, they just simply do not perform as well as these bigger gimbals, even with a lighter payload on them. Uh, this gimbal is just way, way smoother than the Weebill Lab. I would not trade my Moza Air 2 for a Weebill Lab, even though the Weebill Lab is way more compact. Um, and the Crane 3, I think, is one of the best, if not the best gimbal out there on the market, even for your light Sony mirrorless camera. The great thing about this gimbal is that it can handle a small camera and light lens like this, and you can easily throw a large DSLR on it with a large heavy lens on it and still get very nice and smooth shots. And that is definitely who this gimbal is geared towards professional users. If you're out there shooting weddings, if you're doing commercial gigs, if you have the money, I would definitely recommend it. So let's talk about price. I was expecting this to come in at $900, something like that. It's actually $699, which is pricey. Um, but when you consider the Moza Air 2, which is $550, I would gladly pay $150 more for the Crane 3 Lab over the Moza Air 2, uh, just because I think it is easier to use with the dual handle setup and it results in smoother shots. In fact, even when you compare this gimbal to the smaller Weebill Lab that I recently reviewed, it's only a couple hundred dollars more, um, and I'd say that it is definitely a whole lot smoother. Uh, so if you're not the best at ninja walking, then uh, definitely check this out because you can walk around like a normal buffoon and still get relatively smooth footage with this gimbal. Uh, so that's going to be it for my review. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for all of your likes, comments, and support. If you are interested in checking out more specs and info and pricing on this gimbal, as usual, I will post a link down below. So definitely check that out by using that link. You do help support the channel. So thank you so much. Stay tuned for more. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Are yeah. you mad?